So this is the head that I was going to be running on our D-Series build. But basically, I took it to the machine shop and then I got it back and I received some really bad news. If you look at our cam, our cam is completely, completely done. Um, this is actually rounding out. There's a couple of these lobes that are smaller than they previously were. So this is very bad. Um, our rockers over here, as you can see, some of them are about as coarse as an 80 grit sandpaper. They have so much damage on them. Look at that, all kinds of bad. And if you guys don't know what I mean, I'm talking about specifically like all these scratches. These are supposed to be super smooth. And then the worst part is that this head is completely warped. So the actual deck of the head is warped. It is not flat and it does not lay flat on a flat surface. That's fine. We could deck it, we could resurface it, but the journals are also warped. This cam is a harder material than this head. So the cam is gonna be straight before the head isn't. And the cam does not lay straight in the head. It teeter totters back and forth. If you press the cam deep into this journal, then it pops up on this side. And if you press it down on this side, then it pops up on this side and it just teeters left and right, which really sucks because this is actually a really rare head. So because I'm me and I have you guys and you guys are like the most kick-ass followers ever, um, I made a post about my D15 Z7 head being completely trash and Alexis hit me up and he sent me another one. <laughs> So he actually sent this completely free of charge. All I did was pay shipping. And um, yeah, this is actually exactly the same head that I just showed y'all. So I'm going to take all this extra crap off. And we're going to take this over to the machine shop. Um, it has a lot of hardware in here. I need to go through the box and make sure we have everything we need. But um, I can Ooh, baby, she's already looking a lot better. Okay. This head already looks so much better than what we were dealing with. So what we're gonna do is get this loaded up into the Yonke, take this to the machine shop, and then we're gonna pick up this video when we are slapping it onto that block. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Dylan drop me off or give me a ride to the machine shop. We're gonna pick up our head. Let's check this out, boys. In the back seat, so yeah, let's put it in the back. It's clean and nice. Hey, you guys. So we just got out of CNE machine shop. I got my freaking Z7 head all freshly rebuilt and goody, goody, goody. I'm excited for this. I'll show you guys this in a little bit. We're gonna get this slapped onto the block with some ARP head studs. So all of that is to come. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you're excited for this. Let's go. Hey guys, so um, we have the head right here. We picked that up from the machine shop and we have two sets of ARP head studs, D16YA and D16Z6. This box is all of our seals and gaskets. We have our oil pan valve cover in this box. Um, this box has our brackets, oil pumps, junk. And right here we have our Z7 head. This, if you guys do not know, is not the Z7 head that we bought like two years back. This is a Z7 head that came from Texas. I guess Alexis bought a D15B block a while ago and um, he didn't want the head, he didn't need the head. And um, well, guess what? He sent me the head when our head turned out to be doo-doo and then we took it to the machine shop and it got fully rebuilt, got a full valve job done, went, got hot tank, got painted, got all cleaned up. It's all pretty, it's brand new, it's really, really good. Um, we're gonna slap that onto that block. But first, um, I've been having some issues with the Yonke and we have some parts here to fix it. Um, Rock Auto always sends us a magnet. If you guys don't know, I collect these. I have like a million of them in the house. <sighs> and this actually came like two days early, which I'm actually really happy about. 
So guys, this is our ignition switch. When you put your key into the lock cylinder, a little thingy comes in and stabs this guy and it turns it. If you ever, for whatever reason, needed to do this, all you have to do is technically turn that and the car will turn on. I was trying to do that, but 40 year old car, when I removed the ignition switch from the lock cylinder, um, one of these little tabs that holds this plastic guy onto the metal bit, it's kind of hard to see on the camera. But, you know, you get you, you understand what I'm saying. One of the tabs broke off of the 40 year old part. And then this kind of just it all just self destructed. So, you know, I did what I did. <laughs> That's the little pin I was telling you all about. You guys got to match up that to that. Where I've woken him up. Look at that, guys. I got my ignition put back together. I almost dropped it. Yeah, so these idiots are arguing about pickles, but I think this is finished. Oh, okay, the car is dead. But like, yeah, I think this is finished. Can I feel it? Car's dead. Yonke's back. <laughs> okay, why did I straight pipe the Yonke? I actually have a good reason for this. That was our muffler. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just letting it run idle um charge up the battery the battery is pretty freaking dead um unfortunately um my battery charger is at compas so the yonke has to be the battery charger um dylan's valve adjustment is commencing meanwhile let's get all of this stuff exploded out and let's start putting together this motor so I have ADHD and I actually took apart my favorite ratchet because it broke like last week. And these are all the parts to it. Um, so far everything is pretty Gucci, um, except for this part. This part right here seems to have definitely been taking some good damage. This is basically like the part that resists like spinning backwards, like depending on how you have it like clocked, you know what I mean? Let's put this guy together really quick. We're gonna have this like little piston thingy. It's got a spring on it. That goes right on there. Okay, I actually had this little piece um, in backwards, but check this out, it works now. Oh no! Boom, boys! Fixed our freaking ratchet, dude. If you guys don't know, this is like one of my favorite tools that I own. My aunt actually bought me this for my birthday like three or four or five years ago. And it's never failed me until it failed me. And guess what? We just fixed it ourselves. We didn't even need any parts. All we did was clean it up. I re-greased it. This is just some random grease that my brother left in the grease gun. It came out like kind of like petroleum looking, but whatever. Anyways, let's build an engine. So, um, I did not deck this block. This block actually received no machine work at all. This is a budget build. If you guys didn't see the assembly video for this block, check that out. But, um, yeah, no machine work was done at all. I honed these cylinders myself in the garage. Um, Drew, do you mind taking the camera? Sure. And, um, this is how I check for, um, deck warpage. I base this is a true straight edge. This is a true straight. It has like an actual like edge here and this is not a ruler. This actually costs like 20 bucks. But, um, I basically just check it with the filler gauge and I go in as many different angles as possible. And I just basically try to fill the filler bite and go underneath. And I just, you know, like I said, go in as many angles as possible. You're looking for contact between the actual block deck the cylinders themselves on both sides this in the middle part which is like this is really easy to leak um, combustion through this definitely can warp and then um you know just the other side of the deck as well this is all you're doing basically and you can go on various ones if like um the 0 0.002 or 0 0.001 fit under it i don't really trip too hard but if anything bigger than a 0.002 fit under it, then um, you're probably warped. But yeah, so we're good here. None of the fillers are fitting under, so let's proceed here. So moving on to what is our actual head. Um, this is almost a D16Y8 head. This is a P2J-1 head, which is almost a D16Y8 head. The combustion chambers look a whole lot like the D16Y8 combustion chambers. I apologize if there's any wind. As you guys know, it's fall and there's wind in the fall. But what do you guys see right here that's kind of interesting? That's right. We only got one intake valve cracked open right now. And that is because this takes the dual VTEC solenoid. And with this guy, it can actually achieve 
three different cam profiles. That's why it's called the three stage VTEC head. So we have one cam profile, which is 12 valve mode. We only have one intake valve. We're basically running in an econ mode. It's like the D15Z1, the VTEC E engine. When VTEC engages, when this first, or when this solenoid engages, two of these valves will begin opening all at the same time and is basically in 16 valve mode. This basically goes into your regular D16Y7 configuration. So to sum it up, think about it like this. We start off as a D16Y5, the VTEC E engine. We go into D16Y7 mode, 16 valve mode, and then we go into D16Y8 mode, full VTEC mode. And this head actually has a VTEC lobe very, very similar to the y 8 VTEC lobe. Here's how it looks on the top, on the valve train side of things. Um, these are the LMAs, and um, this is actually the um, valve that disengages. This is the valve that turns off and doesn't do anything. I guess somehow this like series of springs and stuff is what ends up locking them together and, in, and then engaging VTEC and all of that stuff. I don't really know how it works to be honest, but that is our head. It looks a whole lot like a D16Y8. It even has a very similar casting. P2J-1. For our head gasket, we are running nothing short of the best. This is an Ashino Stone head gasket from Japan. This is basically the OEM replacement out in Japan. Like this is basically the best head gasket that you can run out in Japan. As you can see, it says it's reliable. Wow, hell yeah. So we're running that. That got sent to us from Japan. So that was freaking awesome. Big shout out to Chao for getting us that um, tensioner. This guy, this tensioner is actually pretty cool. This guy's vintage, it's brand new, but it's vintage. It is a brand new inbox tension and never been opened. Um, this is our oil filter. I really like these Champ oil filters, but they have been discontinued. Luckily, I found them. Champion Laboratories. Running a good oil filter. Bosch water pump. I was actually going to run the Gates water pump, but I didn't like the Gates water pump. Okay, here's something a little funny. Um, I'm pretty sure this Rock Auto part was um, returned and then sent to me because it was opened in the bag and these are very, very visibly water marks. Like this is definitely calcium buildup. So that's pretty sick. I guess that's kind of what happens when you buy Rock Auto parts. Um, for the most part, you get pretty good lucky. You get pretty good merchandise. But um, yeah, this definitely was installed before. Yeah, okay, honestly, guys, I don't think I'm gonna run this pump after all. Um, as we can see, the blades are drastically different. Um, I think they're a lot smaller on this pump. I'm not even positive that this is a Bosch pump, but um, this is the OEM pump. And you can honestly see that the blades are taller and they are just overall bigger in general. And it just looks like this pump is going to be pushing a lot more water than this pump would. Or am I just freaking out? But yeah, we got a used pump. I'm gonna end up returning this to Rock Auto. Cool, but it's all good. So we can't time the engine today, but we can still continue to assemble it. So let's proceed. Sick asses. <laughs> Let me know if that's ever happened to you guys with your Rock Auto purchases. But anyways, um, we're moving on from that, y'all. And um, check this out. These are two sets of head studs. Um, this is obviously an incomplete set of head studs. Issa couldn't pull the last one out. <laughs> but anyways, this is D16Z6. So 92 to 95 D series VTEC. And this is D16Y8. So 96 to 2000 D series VTEC. As you can see, our Y8 studs significantly shorter than our Z6 studs. I've been led to believe that we need nine Z6 studs and we need one Y8 stud in order to make a D16Y8 VTEC head, which is technically what this is, onto a D15B, so basically a mini-me. He's gonna go get pizza. He's gonna test drive his built D-series. <laughs> um, anyways, guys, proceeding. This here is a Gates timing belt, specifically from a D15Z1. That is the 92 to 95 Civic VX model, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it's the VTEC E model. It's the D15Z1, and this is a basically a unique timing belt. It has a unique amount of teeth that you will not find on any other D-series timing belt. And I've been led to believe, like I said, Dylan has tested out out already, but if you put a D16Y8 head onto a D15B1, B2, B7 block, this is the timing belt you need. Um, this is a cheap Chinese head gasket, 
It's literally just been sitting on the shelf. It actually came with the cookie. It came with Danny's car. It came with Gompa ZK. It was in the trunk with a bunch of other gaskets. And um, I'm going to use it for mock up purposes while we find out what studs we need to use. So I was doing some thinking. I got four of these studs in right here. And if, um, you know, if we need one Z6 stud, then obviously that one shorter Z6 stud is going to be very evident on the head, right? So I started looking at our head and, um, you know, we have all of our little stud holes and it's like, they all look pretty even except for, boom, that guy's like way down there. Like you can see it. I know we're using the wide angle, but like you can see it. That guy's like way down there, right? Like way down there way down there so obviously i'm pretty sure that short stud is going to go through that hole and i'm pretty sure that's where our y8 stud is going to protrude from right so i think this is correct i think this is correct i'm gonna slap the head on let her sit down and i'm gonna see if these studs protrude out the way they should if they do then we're gonna proceed strip all this stuff off clean everything up and we're gonna do final assembly So I ended up finding out all the studs that we needed to use. And then I ended up getting our bolt holes cleaned up. All I really did was spray some brake cleaner in there. I had a little brush that I was jamming in there for a little bit. And then I was flipping the block upside down, letting it all drain out. And we did get a lot of grease and crap out. Eventually the brake cleaner started running out clear. So I'm gonna take that as these threads were cleaned up for the most part. And to avoid, you know, threading in some dry threads on dry threads, we are using the ARP fastener assembly lubricant with our ARP head studs because you know, that's what you should do. And um, these are just hand tightened guys. There's really no torque spec for the head studs. They're really just hand tightened. I kind of just run them with my finger like this until my hand gets a little tired. I try to fill them bottom out, but I do not force it to bottom out. Um, I basically just go until there's like, you know, that bit of resistance where it just really feels like it doesn't want to turn no more, like pretty much right there. And then we're done, move on to the next one. Okay, head studs are installed and they look good. There is one very important step first. These are self-tapping screws. Um, we are doing a mini-me VTEC. That basically means that we are taking a non-VTEC block. This is a D15B non-VTEC block and we are putting a VTEC head on it. So the way VTEC works for D series is a little different from B series. With LS VTEC, if you were putting a VTEC head onto a non VTEC block, you would actually run a separate oil feed, usually from your oil filter to the VTEC solenoid and you would tap it. Well, we're not exactly doing that on the single cam because we're lucky and our oil ports actually line up. However, we have an oil jet right here, which is, which is gonna interfere with our VTEC solenoid. This oil jet, should be an oil passageway and it actually supplies the VTEC solenoid with oil pressure. So if you don't remove this guy and you slap a VTEC head onto your D-series block, you will not ever have VTEC. So this is how I remove them. Take this self tapper and you can already see it. Whole entire plugs moving, check that out you guys. And you could probably just boom, like that, that easy. Just pull it out. But yeah, that's just a little thing for you guys. Um, if you ever see a D-series block and it looks like this, it was definitely a VTEC block or it had a VTEC head put on it. If it has that little jet on it, then it was a non-VTEC block and you need to pull that guy out if you're gonna go VTEC. So little mini, what, mini me FYI for y'all, justice is here. Okay, you guys, it has gotten dark, but here are the final results. These are our head studs fit it into our block for the final time. They're already torqued down and they're lubed up and they're ready to get washers and nuts added to them. That's what they all look like. The final combination that I used were nine D16Z6 ARP head studs and one D16Y8 ARP head stud. Unfortunately for Dylan, I do not remember where I put the Y8 head stud. Um, I thought it was this one, but I actually ended up switching this guy out for a Z6 head stud. The reason why is because as you can see, we don't have threads going completely down. I don't know if you can see it, but that's what's going on down here. We don't have threads going completely down. We are going to have to double washer this guy. But if we used a Y8 head stud here, we were gonna have like literally only like half of the nut with like actual 
stud inside of it. I kind of felt like that was defeating the purpose of using the head studs. Um, so we are actually looking pretty good on all of these. Um, like I said, one of these is a white head stud. The white head studs are shorter than the Z6 head studs. Where are, is the white head stud? I do not know. I'm sorry for not providing you guys with that information, but you already have that answer for head studs. This is the way you want your head studs to look like. They essentially should all be like even. I know mine isn't like perfectly even. This guy's a little shorter. So maybe that guy's our D16Y8 stud, honestly. <laughs> but like you guys already know that this is like a Frankenstein motor. Um, some of my head studs were not going in or some of them were going in really tight. Do not force them in. You will literally destroy your freaking block. Instead, get out your freaking air compressor and blow that shit out. Get all of the crud out of there. Like I said, we used brake cleaner and we got all of that crud out of there. We blew it out with compressed air. And then that was when we started getting these studs to finally sit evenly. Do not proceed until they sit like this on their own. You shouldn't be using more strength than like, you know, your finger strength and the Allen key. But yeah. Okay guys, so I have our Japanese stone gasket opened up. <laughs> this is a triple layer D16Y8 gasket. This is essentially the triple layer OEM metal gasket as you can see. This is pretty much that same exact gasket. If you wanted to do like this high compression build or something like that, you could take this gasket apart like what Dylan did with his five layer gasket and you could remove that center layer, that aluminum layer in the middle. You could remove that entire layer of the gasket and that will actually bump up compression a good bit. We're not gonna do that because this this is a turbo build and we want all the ceiling we can possibly get so let's get her laid down i don't want to touch her because i want her to seal perfectly but like i just wanted to show off this gasket this is a really nice gasket are you going me i'm building an engine brother this gasket looks so nice <laughs> Um, super important thing is these little dowel pins. These guys are actually going to keep your head gasket like centered and where it should be. It's going to keep your head gasket from shifting as well as keeping your head from, you know, floating around. So make sure you run these dowel pins, push them all the way in. That's what the bottom of the head looks like. That's what our combustion chambers look like. This is the major difference between D16Y8 and D16Z6 heads is that a Z6 has a completely circular combustion chamber, but these Y8 heads, these Z5 heads and other heads like this, they have a combustion chamber that looks like this. It's a lot different and it produces a much higher compression, compression ratio. And yeah, I'm not really too sure, but I think it has something to do with like the way these engines burn. I think they burn differently from the older D series. Um, but yeah, and also the blue coating for anyone wondering is not paint. That's actually a thermal coating. It's basically just supposed to keep the um, walls of the combustion chamber on the head cooler while, you know, like explosions and all kinds of crap are happening inside of it. Most, if not all machine shops include that in the basic head rebuild. So, you know, that should always be included. And for anyone wondering, this head package, um, valve seals valve job paint hot tank it you know straighten it out and everything this ran me about 140 bucks all said and done for my machine shop lay down all right guys i've already done this a million times but since this is the final time we're going to be doing this cool head is on baby Bolts. Actually, maybe missing some options. So, um, it's the same head bolt sequence for like, you know, any engine ever, but um, the torque sequence is gonna be a little different. So you're gonna read on the internet all kinds of different things. If you bought your ARP head studs brand new, then you should have the torque sequence in a paper in the box. I did not do any of that. So we had to refer to the internet. I started at 20 foot pounds, 40 foot pounds and then I jumped to 66 foot pounds and I actually left these at torque to 66 foot pounds. I have read on the internet that um, some people torque their ARPs all the way down to 80 foot pounds for a boost. I was a little sketched out about that and honestly I just want my engine to freaking run dude. I'm not trying to run into some catastrophic problems tonight. So we're just going to call it that. I'm happy with 65 foot pounds. We're going to break in the engine here. If we want to torque our engine down a little harder than that after breaking, maybe we'll do that. But for now, we're done, guys. We got a freaking engine here.
Yo ma. So this is a 32 axle socket. I use it for the And then you sir are ready for your car meet. Let's go. Hey you guys, it is another morning, not the next morning, it's another morning. Last night I finished editing this video and um, we got the timing section done on the engine but I am actually not going to include that in this video because I think this video already has enough information in it. We have our ARP, all of the information that you need for your ARP stuff. We have our head, you know, just, there's already some mini me information in here and how to do this. We'll do a separate video for timing because my timing's weird. Um, Dylan has a D15B block with a P2J head on top. It's a Y8 head, not a Z5, Z7 head, but you know, it's still a P2J head. And when you're putting a Y8 head, when you're putting a P2J head onto a D15 block, when you're doing the mini me, you use a D15Z1 timing belt. So I ordered a brand new D15 z1 timing belt and guess what it's too short it definitely does not fit um this is a used timing belt this is a d16 z6 timing belt that was in my backyard i pulled that out and i threw that on just so that way we could get some mock-up information in you know what i mean so julian's stealing my motor mounts because we actually have a we're not gonna be needing those stock d-series motor mounts let me just say that but anyways you guys so the d15z1 timing belt is the shortest timing belt for the d-series it has 103 teeth on it that was what i should have needed for this engine however this is a z6 timing belt the z6 timing belt has 104 teeth and as you can see ooh baby baby she's feeling good she's looking really really good dylan thinks that my tensioner is a little too big um i don't think so but like maybe i do have a big tensioner i don't know either way i have some stuff to figure out with my timing side we got enough information jam-packed into this video if you're excited to get the timing stuff done on this engine or maybe get the rest of it thrown together we got to throw all of our studs on it we got to throw our intake manifold on it we got to throw all of our little sensors on it our distributor on it we got to actually get it in time we're gonna have to degree the cam because this is a frankenstein motor but yeah we got some stuff to do we got a couple of buttoning up things to do and we still have to paint our freaking doors and finish our hood but if you're excited for everything to come please like and subscribe guys um if you want to pick up the max speeding rod connecting rods the nip and racing pistons arp head studs anything i will try to jam pack as many links to these products into the description of this video as possible but either way max speeding rods is our sponsor so definitely check out the website save the efs gets you a little bit off me and julian are about to hit the next ftf forever meet um i don't know if i'm gonna record anything for y'all y'all don't really like car meets but um <laughs> engine it's almost ready we're getting there we're adding videos to this playlist soon she is going to be dropped into here and it's going to be really fun so if you're excited for any of that please like and subscribe i will be back soon guys bye guys